This episode is brought to you by PetSmart. Imagine life without your pet. Unthinkable, right? That's why taking care of their well-being is job number one. And PetSmart has everything you need to do anything for your pet. PetSmart's expertise in nutrition, training, veterinary care, and more can help you take care of your pet's well-being the same way your pet takes care of yours. Care the way pets do. Shop now at PetSmart.com. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2046, Super Deadlifts, by Nia Shanks of niashanks.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Hey there, welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, or welcome for the first time if you're new here. This is the podcast where I act as your very own personal narrator and read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online. And with that, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Super Deadlifts by Nia Shanks of niashanks.com. Deadlifts. What can I say about deadlifts? Well, I could say a lot of things, but I'll sum it up into three main points. One, deadlifts are one of the best exercises you can do. Two, everyone should be doing some form of deadlifts. And three, you can't fudge a deadlift. It's easy for people to say they squat 400 pounds when all they really do is a quarter squat. And a lot of guys claim to bench 300 pounds but they neglect to mention that their friend is doing most of the work while screaming, it's all you, bro, it's all you. There's no messing around with a deadlift. You either lift the barbell off the ground or you don't. Now, let's get into several variations of the deadlift. The conventional deadlift. This is first on the list for no other reason than it's the most commonly known and performed version of the deadlift. Then there's the sumo deadlift. The sumo deadlift works the hips to a greater extent than conventional deadlifts. Some people, myself included, can also pull more weight with this style, but that is definitely an individual thing. The sumo deadlift is a great variation to include in your training, even if it's not your strongest variation. Then there's the trap bar deadlift. This is probably the easiest version for beginners to learn. The center of gravity is different because of the weight distribution, and the quads are involved to a greater extent than with conventional deadlifts. If you've never truly learned to deadlift, you may want to start with this version. Then there are the rack pulls. While I generally recommend rack pulls for intermediate to advanced lifters, they can also be a great teaching exercise for beginners who don't have the proper mechanics for pulling off the floor. If you want to pull some really heavy weight, then rack pulls are your solution. You can pull from different heights, so the variations are practically endless. Then there's the conventional deadlift from a deficit. This version is one of my favorites. Because you're pulling the bar off the ground from a deficit, you will work through a longer range of motion. This makes the exercise more difficult and works your hamstrings to a greater extent. If you are weak off the floor when you deadlift, then try pulling from a deficit. It can really help your starting strength off the floor. What you need to know about deadlifting. The first thing you should know is this. If one of the previously mentioned deadlift variations is not in your current training program, you need to change your strength training program immediately. The deadlift is one of the very best exercises you can ever do, and you should always be performing some version of it. Why is it so important to deadlift? Well, there are a lot of reasons, but one very important reason is because the deadlift is a truly functional exercise. You deadlift every day of your life when you pick something up off the ground. Another reason, the deadlift works a ton of musculature in the body. Want to train your upper and lower back, glutes, hamstrings, and forearms all at once? the deadlift is your best friend. And as far as a bang for your buck exercise goes, the deadlift is amazing. And the very last reason, the deadlift is very versatile. There are variations for everyone to use regardless of mobility, strength, training level, and coordination issues. Is deadlifting bad for your back? It sure is, if you perform a deadlift incorrectly. Deadlifts are only bad for your back if you don't use proper lifting mechanics. Heck, any exercise can hurt you if it's performed incorrectly. Even a simple push-up can jack up your shoulders if you don't perform it properly, but that's another post. Here are some of the most common mistakes when performing a deadlift. One, lifting with a rounded upper and lower back. You should never lift with a rounded lower back and your upper back shouldn't round either. The only exception to a slight rounding of the upper back is if you're pulling a max single rep. Push your chest out and keep a tight arch in your lower and upper back. Two, starting the lift with the bar too far in front of you. 
a lot of people deadlift with the bar several inches in front of them. You want the bar to be as close as possible to your body throughout the entire lift. Make sure the bar is touching or almost touching your shins before you start the lift. The exception to this rule is the trap bar deadlift. Keep the bar close to your body, grazing your shins and the thighs throughout the entire lift. Three, not using the hips. To finish the lift, lock the weight out by pushing your hips forward and squeezing your glutes. Do not just lean back. Four, squatting the weight up. When you set up for the deadlift, Your hips should be higher than when you squat, and you should be leaning forward a little more than when you squat. Some people turn a deadlift into a squat. That can get you hurt, and it definitely won't allow you to pull big weights. The squat and deadlift are two completely different animals. Treat them that way. Five, standing with feet too far apart. Now, this does not apply to sumo deadlifts, but once again, people set up for the deadlift like they're about to squat. Your feet should not be further than shoulder width, and possibly even a little closer together than that. And six, not having the right attitude. When you get ready to deadlift, you need to focus completely on what you're about to do. Make sure you set up properly, push your chest out, get close to the bar, set your feet properly, etc. Deadlifting not only tests you physically, but mentally as well. Get ready for the battle ahead. So which deadlift variation should I use? I would use them all, but not all at once. Here's a good example of using three of the variations. Month one, use the conventional deadlift. Month two, use the conventional deadlift from deficit. Month three, do the sumo deadlift. And then repeat that series for another three months and then switch one or more of the variations for a different one. That is just one of numerous possibilities. You just listened to the post titled Super Deadlifts by Nia Shanks of niashanks.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I feel much the same way as Nia does when it comes to deadlifting. That's why I enjoy it so much. But it wasn't always that way. For the longest time, I was actually against deadlifting. This was because it's so complex. The move requires so much coordination that I was afraid I was gonna injure myself. But instead of trying to go out there and do deadlifts on my own and likely hurting myself, I had a friend who had a master's in kinesiology, so a master's degree in the study of human movement, who helped me make sure that my deadlift form was perfect. And we started with a very, very light weight. And then I gradually, very gradually, moved up in weight. And now again, it's become one of my favorite exercises. Now, honestly, I'm not making this story up, but I was at the gym a while back and I saw two gentlemen working out, and they were doing, of course, deadlifts. One of the gentlemen was telling his buddy to move the deadlift bar further away from his feet, and I just shook my head. That's how you're gonna get injured. He was trying to encourage his buddy to push the bar further away and that he would be able to lift heavier if he did that, and I held my breath as that guy lifted that weight because I was sure an injury was about to happen. Luckily, it didn't, but that is absolutely wrong. So the moral is, please don't listen to just anyone. Make sure that if you're trying complex moves like the deadlift, squat, even something like a bench press, that you're using proper form. Because the key is consistency. When it comes to anything that's health-related, consistency is key. We wanna make sure that you're well enough to come back the next day. So take the time to learn the moves properly, build that strong foundation, and then you'll be practically invincible. All right, that's another edition of Optimal Health Daily. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for listening. And I'll be back with our usual Sunday bonus episode in just a second. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.